Nestled under the beautiful, towering spire of Salisbury Cathedral is the Bishop's Palace. This ancient building forms the heart of Salisbury Cathedral School, home of the Cathedral's choir. That's our school. This is the morning where everybody comes in for morning practice. And it's where we have our normal school day. Yeah, it probably is quite nice having breakfast at school because you wouldn't have to get up as early because you wouldn't have to go all the way to school, would you? Yeah. Food's really nice. Like, you have cooked breakfast most of the time in the morning. How many practices do you have in a day? So if you have even song, you have two practices a day, the morning practice and the one just before even song. And if you don't have even song, you just have one in the morning. Right. People walking on the side, the two boys who walk not in line are head chorister and deputy head chorister. The ones in the cloaks are full choristers and then the ones who aren't in the cloaks are the ones who are probationers who are just starting. So they have to be made into full choristers. Do you have to wear ruffs just because it, they want you to look smart or is it for some special occasion to like keep you warm or something? I think it's just how you dress and it just fits together in a way. But the men don't wear, wear ruffs. I thought it would feel quite tickly. Sometimes it does, but it, it keeps you warm a bit as well. Cathedrals such as Salisbury have always had trained choirs of some sort because the music has become more and more complicated and difficult to sing. You have to have rehearsal time to make this music really come to life and of course the reason we do the music is to bring the liturgy to life and to interpret the words and give the worship a different slant. Salisbury I think is, is a very special choir school it is one of the few choir schools which girls and boys have um, parity of experience, equal opportunity, both in the choir and obviously in, in the wider school life. The children sing an equal number of services. The funding for the children is identical, therefore the opportunities are fair and square. There is no competition between the girls and, and the boys in the choir. They both want to do the best, and I think they both achieve the best too. In the cathedral, it has really nice acoustics, so it sounds really magical in the way. The girls are called sopranos, so on our folders, it says soprano and we have a number. And the boys are called trebles. We sing modern choral and then we go all the way back to ancient. I think I like the modern. And then sometimes we sing in different languages. We sing English, Latin, quite a lot of German. We've sung some Russian and some French pieces as well. I think German would be the hardest. German's quite hard. The process involved in becoming a chorister here in Salisbury usually starts with something called be a chorister for a day, which is an open day for the choir, and it normally takes place on a Saturday in November. It's a good occasion because my choristers work alongside boys and girls who are thinking they might like to become a chorister. My dad 
dragged us along to a beer course for a day and my daughter was six and she got hooked. She completely got hooked and kept saying, I want to be a chorister, came away, I want to be a chorister. So we thought, okay. And then we just carried on with the process. And I suppose I, I hadn't been a chorister, I didn't know much about that, that sort of life. But you, you keep hearing about sportsmen that have done it and people that have done it that, that are quite extraordinary. So I just tried to make it a fun process because I didn't think she'd get in and I thought it would be good to do it. And if she didn't get in, it's a good learning experience. When these young people come to me, I usually get a sense quite quickly of whether there's that musical spark, which some children have and some don't. Sure, some of them will have a very good musical ear. They might play an instrument. They might have a nice voice, untrained. But it's that little spark and that sense that they really want to do this and also that they're willing to be taught because that's what I have to do. I have to mould these children's voices to sound like a, a, a choir. It's not all solo singers, it's, it's, a, it's a team. David, of course he's a professional but also he's a family man so I think he really understands kids and that's really important because they're doing quite a high pressure job. I hear from my daughter how funny he is. You know, there are times when he just makes them laugh, and I think that's really important. They'll give of their best. It was less scary than I thought it would be. Everybody was really nice. It was very relaxed, and you just got taken over, and then you just had to sing some things, and it was quite easy. In terms of preparing her for the, the big day, we met David informally. Uh, and he heard her songs and then gave her some oral and sight reading and I was there for all of that so I could get an idea of what he wanted. We then went back for a workshop where he gives you bits of music and the oral exercises he's going to give so everything's very transparent. We do a series of ear tests which are more or less oral tests, grade one, grade two, grade three, associated board exam standard. So things like range, just to see whether they've got a decent register, particularly higher register. Picking out notes from a chord, clapping back a rhythm, singing back a melody. It usually gives us a good picture of what type of musician we have in front of us. And if you like, the icing on the cake of this audition is whether the child can read music or not. Mr. Hulls is really nice and he makes us laugh quite a lot. And then other times he's a bit more strict, but he's really good as a director of music. Yes. Okay, finished. So you can go back now and perhaps we'll see each other later on, okay? Yeah, okay, you. thank you. Bye bye. I fell in love with Salisbury. What I loved was that I felt the school was very nurturing. I th didn't feel it was a hot house because I knew that wouldn't suit us as a family. I can say with confidence that 100% of Salisbury Cathedral School pupils are involved in some sort of music making. We have an intensity of music making that is quite special. Salisbury Cathedral School is a big community. 
It includes the children, the staff, but most importantly, their parents, and indeed their grandparents. And that manifests itself in lots of different ways. They come to matches, parents come to Friday morning assemblies. We hold a wonderful music festival day where everybody is encouraged to play or sing and many families put together ensembles. You can sing on the cello. Yeah. Learning a musical instrument is a discipline that you have to work at and it means that you have to spend time rehearsing on your own and playing through things over and over again sometimes to make them perfect. You also spend a lot of time one-to-one -one with a teacher and that individual time concentrated solely on you I think pays dividends in learning in other lessons where the teacher's time is divided amongst the whole class. If you can be independently working whilst the teacher is talking to somebody else in the class that means that you're a step further on than somebody else who doesn't learn a musical instrument. I think that being part of any team that's working well is superb. But singing in a choir, when your voice comes from within you, it is part of you as a character. And if you can match your sound to the sound of others around you in making a piece of music, which is designed to move people's emotions and to communicate words, is an amazing experience. It really is. And I think that uh, being a cathedral chorister and learning to work as a professional chorister every day of your life with adults, there are very few professions where that is true, means that you're working to a high standard every day and working as part of a team and everybody is important in that team. And the power of music that you can make is extraordinary. The choristers bring to the school a sense of natural rhythm, if I can use that pun, because they are so used to a fairly tight schedule. They are used to working under pressure, uh, learning new music at quite a pace, and they are used to working very closely as a team. Therefore, this dynamic, I think, benefits the whole school in many respects. At the same time, the choristers benefit from being immersed into what is by day uh, a normal prep school environment which helps to ensure that their feet are firmly on the ground. In the cathedral they are very much professional musicians, in the school they are quite rightly prep school children who are valued and respected alongside all of their other peers. Choristers' lives are made up of the Opus Dei, that's what they sing every day, even song. But also, they may be involved in concerts in the diocese, in recordings, and they may go on tours overseas. So their lives are full of different opportunities to showcase what they do every day. This is the German tour, which is really fun. When on tour, it's a great chance for the children not only to have to work together with the other children and the director of music and the adults in the choir, but also they get a lot of time to play together, which is very much part of the chorister experience. It's lovely to take your choir to somewhere else and do what you do daily here to another audience who are usually completely bowled over by what we do. I've noticed positive changes that are huge around being able to organise herself, around discipline. And just really having the ability to organise herself was the feedback we got, that was great. I've noticed things around um, just going with the flow, being really flexible, so they went on tour to Germany off they went to the zoo that evening, they're doing a concert for two hours. I liked all of it. I think the trips we went on were really fun. The music. I love music, but my husband, for instance, has no, he's an engineer, he never learned a musical instrument, can't read music. He is astounded at what they can do. 
it, because it's something he can't do. And the way that they'll just do it then with professionals. Another thing is the intergenerational. I love that because they're singing with the lay vicars. They're very at ease with adults of all ages. I think those benefits will last her whole life. We do some massive services with a cathedral that's packed full of people, particularly at Advent, Christmas and Easter. Is this not Mr. Light? Yeah. Darkness to Light is probably the best, the best service of the year. Yeah, when I went to it, I quite liked it too. I'm going to do my first one as a chorister this year. It's fair to say that the life of Chorister is incredibly busy and uh, there are probably some adults who would struggle to keep up with the, the pace and the variety. We do Corrie Holes and Exiat, which are really fun. And we go on lots of fun trips and things. The run-up to Christmas and Easter for choristers is probably the most exciting highlight of the chorister experience. Do you have to wear different clothes for different services? Well, when we're doing things in our cathedral, we wear our white robes, our tabards and our medals. But when we're doing when we're doing concerts, the only people who wear medals are the year eights. Oh. Do the boys and girls sometimes sing in harmony? Yes, most of the time. It's normally the boys and the girls who sing in harmony, but deaf and can who split. What does it feel like when you walk down singing? It's nice, it's quite fun singing while walking along and everything. <laughs> Probably if I was a Christ, I'd enjoy Christmas services the most. And I think Christmas is quite special. Boarding at any time of year can be fun, but in summer the boarding house garden provides space to let off steam. Inside, there's plenty of homely space to curl up and relax. How many nights maximum do you stay? Or do you stay all week usually? Um, in the boarding house? Yeah. Um, five nights. I like it. I get homesick, but I like it. <laughs> Mrs. Slade is always sorting us out. She's really nice. She's tireder, but I've noticed this year she's less tired, so I think they just get match fit, like any of us. And that also includes the family as well. We all get used to the rhythm of this experience that's so short. I mean, a year's gone by for us, and that gives us only three more years, and I cannot believe how quickly it's gone. If your child is a chorister, it is a big commitment, but the rewards are enormous.
has given you musical gifts, which you have used in his service in this place. May you leave the cathedral, which has been your home, with music in your life and a sense of God in your heart. Would you be sad to leave? I would be sad to leave, yeah. But I'd stay friends with everybody. And I think in terms of the future, I, as a parent, I don't know what job my daughter's going to do because I don't think any of us as parents know what jobs are going to be around in 30 years' time because life is changing so quickly. But what I do know is the skills that she's going to have around being part of a team, around being able to have a dialogue, around being able to listen music and choir singing's about listening, are going to stand her in great stead. And I think if we had ex-choristers running the country, we may be in a really good position.